Good evening and welcome to the Town Council regular meeting, November the 21st, 2013. We have a roll call, please. Ms. Yeah. Yeah. Alley present. Solomon present. Bannon present. Mundell here. We've established a form. Please stand for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. Tourist destination, 
So plot all of our data into the Google results, I mean into the TripAdvisor results. So opportunities like that in our digital footprint. I'd like to talk about product development a little bit. I think you guys are doing a really good job here. And that's the future of tourism is that you begin to more deliberately and with some planning begin to develop, develop your tourism product. It used to happen organically. I, this guy in the 30s in San Antonio didn't say, I'm going to build a San Antonio river walk and it's going to become this huge destination by 2010. He said, I really want a river walk and that'd be really cool and I'll hire the architects and do the gardening. Um, but now it's a much more competitive market and more and more cities and towns are wanting to capture the revenue. So you have to work at it and you have to be deliberate about it and you have to think about it. And some of it's going to happen organically, but a lot of it is cooperation and getting together and putting your, your resources and your organization behind it. I think you guys are doing a great job with that. The other thing that I want to talk about is group tourism. The first day I was on the job, I walked into the office. It was about 9 o'clock. At 9.45, I got a call from this guy who's in Williamsburg, and he brings people here. He wants to bring people here from um, the resorts there. And um, group tourism is a whole other animal, but it's kind of a very easy business model that doesn't take a lot of investment from the community, from us, and it really doesn't take a lot of manpower because, of course, that's something I really have to think about as we move forward. And this is a guy who's going to bring a tour back every week, hopefully. And that's just us reacting. That's not any deliberate planning or going out and introducing ourselves to the people that, you know, are based in Richmond and kind of really working those relationships or putting any effort into it. Um, and I was a bit worried at first that we don't have the restroom infrastructure. And then I learned yesterday that, oh, all these buses have restrooms on them. Problem solved. Mm -hmm. So group tourism, here we go. Um, the other thing I want to talk about, just very briefly, is from housekeeping things. We moved the office from Melfa to Anancock about two months ago. There is an open house on December 10th from 4 to 6. That's a Tuesday afternoon. Would love it if you guys don't mind doing the trek all the way up there. Um, I want to mention the Visitor's Guide in 2000, for 2014 is going to be um, published and dropping into the market in early January. I think that's a typical, usual cycle for you guys. Um, and then I want to talk to talk about the Tourism Summit, April 8th of 2014. It's um, going to be an afternoon that's free to the public with an emphasis on our digital footprint building and our opportunities in space tourism and um, the opportunities we have in product development, working together as partners and building a stronger product. Um, and then in closing, I just want to say that um, I can't be all things to all people, just FYI. We're going to have to make some hard choices about what to focus on and what to prioritize as, in, as a community. And um, if nobody's mad at me at any given time, I'm probably not doing my job. So I expect to be taking some risks. We're going to do some pilots. We're going to test some things, see if they work. In the digital world, that's fairly easy to do. And um, I look forward to working with everybody. And thank you again for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carol, also. Mm -hmm. uh, now we shall go into public comments, three minutes. Uh, don't forget the rules, keep it clean. No one has signed up to speak, but I did receive um, one letter in writing to read. This is from um, Deborah Bender. This is message to the mayor from Old School Cape Charles. The wheels of justice grind slowly, and Old School Cape Charles LLC has not given up the fight to save Central Park property from the hands of a developer who would turn the largest public building in town into an apartment house. Old School Cape Charles still has the option of requesting the Supreme Court to review the decision of the writ panel that rejected our appeals. The question of standing looms large in the rejection. Circuit Court Judge Revel Lewis ruled that a community group formed for the sole purpose of saving a public asset does not have standing to question the decision of town council. Judge Lewis also decided that he did not have jurisdiction over the case involving the sale, 
So Old School Cape Charles plans to ask the Supreme Court to review the decision of the panel. Then there is the question of the town's, town staffs ignoring historic district guidelines which state that a parking lot should not be allowed in front of the building. Madam Mayor, you have refused to identify the front of the building, but we believe that the Virginia Department of Historic Resources will be able to locate the front even without your assistance. The school developer, J. David McCormick, told the Historic District Review Board, August 20th, that according to his civil engineer, he has no other option but to build parking lots on the side and the back of the school. Mr. McCormick maintains that the side of the school faces south, which is the entrance to the building. Mr. McCormick has yet to get his historic tax credits, and we question whether he ever will, so long as he insists on crowding an asphalt parking lot around what obviously is the front of the building. The question of the low-income housing has also not gone away. If, a very big word, Mr. McCormick actually were able to obtain historic tax credits and build his 17 one-bedroom rental apartments, he then would have the opportunity to discover that Cape Charles is not Richmond, not Petersburg, not Hopewell, and not Fredericksburg. The only chance to rent those loft apartments in Cape Charles would be under Section 8 subsidized housing. But McCormick told the historic board, we don't do any low income, we don't want to detract from the neighborhood. The town can expect to receive only one economic benefit from the apartment complex. 17 water bills a month at $108 each for a total of $22,000 a year. Is that what you meant, Mayor Sullivan, when you wrote about converting the school into an asset that contributes to our economy? Deborah Bender, Community Relations Spokesperson for Old School Cape Charles. All right, the next item is approval of the agenda format. Can I get a motion, please? Second. Hearing no objections, so moved by unanimous consent. Approval of the minutes. I need a motion. So moved. Thank you. I have one correction. Page seven. Um, this is the second paragraph. After. Uh, we had talked about who was an agreed party, and uh, the town staff rejected uh, an appeal to the town council for the certificate of appropriateness. So there, I see the sentence reads, there was much discussion regarding the parking lot, landscape being and location of the front of the building. Um, after that, uh, sentence there, I think one of the more interesting ex exchanges of the evening, went to the, uh, the stated that, uh, I you know, asked the town planner if the front door of the building still faced south, and uh, Mr. Tessman responded with a shrug as if he didn't know. And then I asked the mayor if she, if she knew uh, to state whether the front door of the building still faced south. And then uh, Councilwoman Natale uh, interrupted that and, and advised uh, Mayor Sullivan, don't answer that. I think we're, does anybody dispute that's what happened and that's what was said? And if we don't, I would ask that that be included in the minutes. Anything else? Okay. No, ma'am. Joan? Nothing? All right, so we have a motion. Have we have a motion to uh, approve the minutes. We have a second. With the correction. I'm sorry? With the correction. Correct. Okay. With councilman's corrections to the minutes on page seven. So, hearing no other input, so moved by unanimous consent. I, I wasn't here. I was staying. Okay. I'm going to town. Sorry. Um, department reports. Um, the treasurer's report, which is an action item. Um, on the first page, I have the, the cash on hand listed at a total of $552,925. We closed the Bank of America checking account and um, we'll be moving the um, library fund funds from the LGIP account to the shore bank account this month. Um, the restricted cash balance is $356,112. In the tax category, we show a $23,000 improvement over last year um, in all of the taxes. The admission taxes 
um, fiscal year to date is $11,200. The meals tax, $135,400. Real estate taxes as of October was $22,994. Transient occupancy tax, $36,900. Um, as of today, um, what had been posted in our system, we have collected $102,922 in real property tax and $31,751 in personal property tax. Um, so I looked at those figures before coming over. On the second page, um, in the general fund, the current year-to-date totals for revenues are $481,000, expenditures $572,000, Public Utilities Fund is current um, revenues of $788,000 expended, $369,000. Harbor revenues are $460,000, expenditures $418,000. And the sanitation um, showing $60,100 and expended $27,800. And... Um, on the third page, we have the capital items. There really isn't much of a change since last month. Um, we have the multi-use trail at $9,984 and the gator at $12,000 total. Um, I know that some of the other projects are in the process of getting started. On the fourth page, um, I just wanted to give an update about the tax bills. The county had contracted their services out this year and um, they dropped off the book with us on Friday, September 27th. Their IT staff at the county worked with our database provider to import the files into our database around mid-October. And then um, our database provider had to make necessary adjustments because you no know, import is done perfectly between two databases, so it, it took about a week for us to finally import it October 23rd. Then internally we have to work to review the accuracy of all of the information. And the personal property tax bills were sent out around November 7th. Real estate bills were mailed November 8th. We had about 1,800 real estate tax bills and 970 personal property tax bills and um, other adjustments to some random bills have been sent out since then. Um, Northampton County provided an adjusted personal property report to us on November 18th for any property that was sold or moved out of the town during 2013. And so we revised those bills and remailed those on Monday. And um, the tax deadline this year is Thursday, December 5th. And again, next year, 2014, Northampton plans to do semi-annual billing. And they'll send one bill out for real estate mid-year, the other year at the year end. And we will continue to bill one time a year next year. And then if they continue to move forward with semi-annual, we'll move forward with that in 2015. Um, I've had some questions about um, why some people's tax bills have gone down with the county and some have, and theirs have gone up with the town. Um, and with the county, their overall assessments decreased 19%. With the town, our values de decreased by 35%. So we had to. Um, come up with a little bit higher of a rate increase in order to make up the difference and equalize the tax rate here. So a lot of people have been questioning that. And then in some cases, assessments for one person may have gone down 100,000, the next person may, may have gone down 500,000. So they're not going to be equal across the board. And if anybody has questions for y'all, you could just refer them to us and we can explain it a little bit better. Um, and I'm in the process of, of putting together an amortization spreadsheet for the debt service. I'm going, we had been busy 
this week with all of the tax questions. So I'm going to try to email that to you all either tomorrow or over the weekend. And um, that way we can give you a listing of all of the debt service before our meeting on December 3rd. Um, we're going to be having the, the meeting related to the new money on December 3rd. The public hearing is going to be December 5th. And um, 2014 business license applications will also be mailed out in December. So, do you all have any questions? So, I've got a couple. Okay. Um, after the last at the work session last Thursday, um, so I asked a question of the uh, of, of the town, and then it was subsequently attempted to be answered by the Davenport consultants. But the question was, what was the approximate uh, total debt of the town say, like right now? I know it might be a moving figure, but. As of this evening, what would be a best guess estimate of the total amount of debt uh, the town is carrying? Um, I need to, I've been creating a spreadsheet. I need to put it together and, and send it to you guys tomorrow. I just need to look at all of the amortization schedules. We have had some adjusted schedules sent to us in the past year. Now, the, the bond so. council, seemed, he, uh, he stated it was approximately $10 million. Do you feel like that's in the ballpark? Or is that? I, I think it's yes. in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. We also have um, some vehicle leasing. You know. um, what Kim had provided um, at the last meeting was um, the bond, the bond year, and the amounts of the bond. And some of the amortization schedules, as she said, change from year to year. Um, we had some changes this year with, with several. So just to give you a balance today of what the bonds are, but to give you an example, um, the um, five million dollar wastewater plan, I mean, we just took that bond on, so that hasn't um, you know, zero interest in it anyway. So, but that is still a debt service. So we're going to give the overall um, of the balances are, and we, we have the terms, and just want to give an overlay of that. And we plan to have that at the meeting on the third for discussion. No, even right beforehand, and I'm going to include the bond title, the years, um, the start year, end year of it, the total debt left related to each one, the total initial debt for it. So I'll have all of that included. Okay. In the uh, another question is as far as that. Davenport company the, the refinancing, um, the refinancing versus the, the new money, two separate things, and, and I, I try to view them separately. It, um, I believe in that contract it called for a cap of thirty-seven thousand five hundred dollars for their services, and their variable hourly rates of who was working on what. I, I guess um, so. It's not a flat rate. It's it's one that will accumulate or accrue? Not for this, no, flat not rate. for this, but it's a flat rate for the refinance and, and oh, these flat. applications. Okay. If we would continue to do any additional work down the road with them, well, there may be a okay. few. Well, let me rephrase the question. So, so again, at this, at this meeting, how, how much are we indebted to Davenport? How much uh, do we owe them if we go to a check tonight? Bring our balance current. We owe them thirty-seven five hundred for the services they provided. From the work done. the refinancing, and mm -hmm. it's a part of the refinancing. Um, okay, I, I, I viewed that. I, when I looked at that Percocin contract, there it was a schedule of hourly fees depending on who was doing what in their company. So I that, thought it was that, that was still. that was the procurement. That was the procurement okay. for for the uh, uh, request for proposal. Going into, uh, that was still for the contract with Davenport. We were looking at another uh, contract that was for the Pocosin, which is how we procured their services to get to the point of having them go out to bid to look at our debt service and um, uh, and refinance our debt, which the 37500 was built into the savings of the refinance. And that would include any, anything that we move forward to 
with bond and includes legal bonds, Davenport services, and all their time that they um, work on looking for refinancing options. Okay, so no matter what so we do going forward, we've already obligated ourselves to that. Mm -hmm. I, I thought I heard him say he would not go definitely would not go over the service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if one, we would work with them in the future, there yeah. would be additional fees. And then one last question. Uh, last last month we had uh, town lawyer Mike Sterling sit in on our meeting. Um, I was curious uh, and had a couple of questions. What is his hourly rate to, to the town to, to do that or anything? Well, that would depend on so if he even charged us. That, for that evening, he doesn't have But well, when he does charge us. I would do that with him that time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because he did it that evening. Mm -hmm. right. They do have a lot of invoices where they have zero earning Time. charge listed next to him. Any other questions? I need a motion to accept the treasurer's report. So moved. Second. Second. Thank you. Thank you, Kim. Hearing no objections, so moved by unanimous consent. Uh, Planning Commission of Boards. Uh, I've just got a couple of quick updates from the, the report. Um, the Historic District Review Board, they met Tuesday night. Um, all four uh, applications were approved, um, in addition to one uh, late application that we had come in at 555 Mason. Um, we've gotten a couple of questions, so just to clarify, the, the Historic Review Board did not approve a one-bedroom hotel on Pine Street. They approved uh, the exterior alterations to the building. Um, they don't look at the use, so that still has to come in through for zoning clearance. Um, also, we've got an application that just came in for a wetlands board meeting. Um, I'm in contact with the, the board members and be scheduling a public hearing. Um, Bayshore has revised their proposal of the travel lift piers. Um, the proposal now includes widening the, the existing slip and uh, eliminating the wave screen. Um, so it's not going to be having that 250 foot encroachment into the channel. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers, Heather and I had a uh, conference call, um, was that yesterday? They are looking at starting dredging in November and December of next year um, and we need to be working on a new easement for the spoil site B. I guess that's a temporary one that they used back in the 80s. Um, I'm working with Dale Pusey from VDOT right now to uh, get him some requested information about the uh, proposed development um, or what, by the Harbor Access Road, um, anything that might affect their, their design. And we received the scope of work from the PDC regarding the comp plan. Um, we'll be reviewing that and bringing it to council the next month um, for council's review. Mm -hmm. It's it's kind of funny in our in our zoning ordinance. Um, it doesn't really define a, a minimum of rooms. Um, it, I think it's for temporary uses, like short-term uses. Um, I haven't come across any zoning ordinances that define a minimum uh, room numbers for a hotel. Um, it seems one, one room might be a little uncommon for, for a hotel, but in, uh, in a plain read, I, I haven't seen anything against it in our ordinance. Um, it, it mentions in the the commercial district that um, you know, residential dwellings cannot be on the first floor, but the definition of residential dwelling doesn't apply to to a hotel room. So, as long as uh, you know, as long as it, that's what the use is going to be, and it wasn't converted to a residential unit down the road or anything, then by the way to our, our ordinance, it, it seems fine. So, about how many people can you have in that one room? <coughs> Just depending on how big the bed is. Well, does it have does it have sprinkler system? Um, that would be something for Jeff to answer for the uh, building code. Uh, I can't make that determination. I've had the plans haven't been presented to me yet. Okay.
Thank you, Ralph. Uh, other department report? Does anyone have any questions uh, for uh, on my uh, town manager report? I do, I do have a, a few updates. Um, the park um, uh, construction has been going uh, along nicely. I think uh, Dave, if I'm correct in saying, depending on the weather and we have a little bit of electrical and plumbing that uh, we're looking at uh, possibly up to 30 days before he would be done, depending on the way to connect with the utilities and, and a few things. But the last time I spoke to Sean, uh, he had given that a time probably about, right. Right. Sure. Of around about 30 days. Mm -hmm. um, so we're excited about that. Um, also, uh, Public Works has been working very hard uh, decorating around, uh, around town. Um, so um, I just want to let everybody know that, as well as um, the, uh, I wanted to touch on uh, VDOT's work, um, Dave, in reference to the area of Palm Street and Madison on the drop inlet. I, I can't enlighten you on that because I, I haven't talked to VDOT about that. I'm not sure what their schedule is, but I can find it. Well, I mean, what they had found when they were doing some cleaning out. Oh, what they I mean, found. I think it's a good thing. Uh, well, um, what they, when they dug that intersection out, they found um, a couple of the culverts that went under the street terminated in man uh, drop inlets that, and then went nowhere else. So the, the water wasn't really going anywhere. They also found one uh, line that was completely collapsed from a sewer line that had been brought through there. The top of the storm drain had been knocked out, and so did, and over the years it had just filled in with dirt. So there was a lot that they found there that they corrected. Um, I think the I think the cut <clears throat> excuse me is still open. If you want to see how they corrected it, and um, we should get a lot better drainage down there now. You know, from the from the repair. That's out Plum and Madison. Plum and Madison. We're where, where, where everything drains to, so it should it should get better. And we'll also have some improvements with the trail phase two that will hopefully also alleviate any drainage. Yes, sir. Um, I wanted to, if you would give a short explanation of, of the two pump stations we had talked earlier today. When, when we saw the list of, at the work session last week, the proposed needs for the, the new money. Right. One of the biggest pieces of that is, is the Pine and uh, Plum Street uh, new station. There. Right. And uh, it calls for 230000 per station and then a $30,000 engineering. So I mean, that's a big piece, or, you know, about half of that proposed borrowing. So uh, Saturday I had the opportunity to, to look into the pump station on, uh, on Plum, and you know, uh, Dan, Dan was answering some questions, and it helped me explain some things. And then I fired some questions off of you, and I was wondering if you could, you know, give a short explanation on why that would be, why that is needed now per se, or why, you know, how long could it go like it is, how antiquated is our situation. And um, just give us an explanation on why that figure is estimated to be where it is. If you could, uh, understand it well, the the issue with the the pump stations is that they are getting old. Um, there are issues uh, code wise with the way that they were constructed 30 years ago. Um, by today's uh, codes, they you know they they see it as being a safety hazard with the wet well being in the same building with the controls because you have a source of gas through the, you know, the gas is coming from the wet well and you've got a source of ignition with all the uh, electronic controls and stuff that are in the building. So built, if it were built today, it couldn't be built the way it is. And so the engineers in looking at upgrading the pump stations look at it, well, if we're gonna upgrade the pump stations, um, and they do need to be upgraded, the, the controls are old, the, the pumps are old, um, and I'm not saying that if we don't do it this year that, you know, we're going to, you know, they're just going to stop operating. No, I mean, we can always replace pumps. Uh, we can place, can replace controls, but once you start getting into replacing pumps and controls, it starts getting to be pricey. 
So um, if you're going to do all of that, the um, you may as well go ahead and just bring the building up to up to code. So um, by you know today's codes, um, you have to bring the wet well outside so that you have the wet well, the source of the 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 fuel for the fire uh, separated from the source of ignition for the fire. So the wet well's outside, your controls are inside. We've already moved the generator outside, so that would be um, a savings that um, we should be able to get, you know, from having already done that. Is there an option to move some, some of the controls outside that wall, but yet sheltered from the elements, or is the wet well just so antiquated that this needs to be moved up? Yeah, there are always options, uh, and I guess um, there was a, a PER uh, created. I didn't know exactly what other options they looked at. You know, when they were looking at the uh, upgraded pump stations. But, but, the, but that was an estimate that we received from the two thousand. From the engineer, that's right. Yeah, that was a, that was what they and they. But that's through uh, thirty percent design. So as they. Go through the design. They they look at different things. Um, you know that that price tag could very well come down once they get you know 30 percent is pretty early in the design. So as they move forward, they have um, you know they get they they look at different cost factors and they look at ways to bring the cost down. You know as they're as they're um, moving through the process. GHD prices things conservatively. You know, they, but they're usually not far off. They tend to err on the high side so that you don't get blindsided when you get into a project. It's kind of bad one day. And the, and the manholes for the water filtration um, have a $100,000 price tag on that and the information you have. Is there a way to prioritize or categorize those from uh, instead of starting with the worst ones first? And is there we would need to do them all at one time, and could any of that work be done in-house with the personnel we have if we had the problem here? In-house, I don't think it is really doable. We're, 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 you know, we're, we don't have the manpower to do it in-house. I think, um, uh, yes, it could be prioritized. You could do some certain ones um, <laughs> first. I would say the worst ones would be the ones in, that are the deepest and in the areas where the water table is highest. So you, because that's where you're going to get the most hydrostatic pressure on the wet well. You know, if you've got a high water table and a low and a, and a deep uh, manhole, they would certainly be the ones that I would choose to do first if we were prioritizing. I think a, I think a circle price a thousand dollars per manhole um, could probably could easily come down if we if we put that out to bid for all of them to be done, you know, you might be talking about, you know, three quarters or a half that price. I don't know. I mean, we, you know, we've never really put it out for bid. You know, we have gotten prices for a manhole, and, and that price was $1,000. So, um, we've never put it out for bid, so we're not sure exactly what the price tag is. But it's something that needs to be done. Yeah, that is something that to. absolutely needs to be done. It takes away capacity for our wastewater plant. Um, we're under the gun from the DEQ. They're 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 laying off of us right now because we've done a lot of work um, over the last three or four years to, to get us to this point. They like to, they would like to see us continue to work towards our I and I issues. And if we're going to stay on their good side, we need to keep doing that. And if we're just gonna if we're gonna do them a few at a time, that's better than none. I, I thought we were going to discuss all this on Tuesday night yeah. or, or Tuesday yeah. night yeah. in depth. Yeah. But since we're over, oh, I mentioned the other day that the other night when we talked about the manhole covers that we had smoked every house in town, correct? Mm -hmm. And we've had a, a colon, we've had a, a, a colonoscopy on all our sewer lines, correct? Correct. How much did that cost us? Roughly, if you have any idea. Yeah, um, it was under, it was around twenty to 30000 Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Dave. Okay, um, one other thing while I'm up here, Heather and I have been uh, discussing this week, we've got, a, we've got an issue with uh, Kelly's trash, once again, 
and uh, Bill Parr, we've been uh, talking with Bill Parr, they're getting ready to renovate the uh, one-story hotel building. So um, they've asked that we, they've asked Gene to move the trash cans from, away from the building. So our, we, the location we've come up with right now looks to be the most reasonable spot, which would come with some sort of a price tag, you know, monthly uh, price tag for a service from us would be the library parking lot directly across the street. It's paved, it's easy access for the trucks. Um, it just looks like, it, it looks like it would be a good fit. And what we're considering is that this would be a commercial dumpster that anyone who was willing to pay, anybody who needed that service and was willing to pay whatever fee we, you know, um, set up would um, would be able to use it. And the, the other option would be, um, I mean, that, that is an option that would be a, um, whether it's a temporary, to um, a long term, uh, looking at the, the land that we have behind the library and uh, opening up that alley and we have to have a curb cut and we have an area there that would support the commercial needs that are not just for Kelly's, um, it could be for the um, uh, current library and future build out and also deliveries when they're done and or Miriam um, to have that uh, area. Um, the problem that we, that we have um, or that Jean has um, is that, uh, as Dave said, the, uh, the new owner who's going to open up and do all the uh, restoration on the outside of that building um, will not be able to do work around that with the dumpsters there. And there's also a part of the dumpsters that are on the owner's property and also in the public alley. There's not enough room to have, have them there. Um, and we've just been trying to brainstorm of, of you know, where can we help, uh, you know, our business and also plan for the future commercial needs in that area, whether this is a temporary, uh, you know, location while we plan for the whole development of the land that we have, that we um, <coughs> have, have plans to work on app, uh, alley access and also parking and how that might fit with the commercial area, you know, um, uh, sanitation location. Um, right now we, we provide, we contract the service from disposable, dis, um, data disposal, and we build the um, businesses for their commercial track. Um, so it, it, it's a, it's a, it's a real big problem for, for Kelly's because he has no room for, for the, the dumpster. Brad, would a compactor help for all your, your trash and garbage? Comes out of a little block. I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm good. So, we're working on it. If anybody, if the council has any suggestions or comments, just let us know. Okay. We're good. I don't have for Dave. I have okay. a couple, couple more questions for you want. In your memorandum to the council and mayor, I know at the workshop meeting Thursday night, there was a lot of back and forth between the words variable, fixed, and then, then the term reset in there. And in, in, the, in this report, uh, the last sentence of the first page of your memorandum says, Town Council passed the resolution to refinance with a known savings of $231,305.21. And I was questioning that because you know, I would say, well, that would, that's known up through the first 10 years. But then I'd use the word, it, they, after that it's variable, which I was corrected by Mr. Rhodes in the minutes. It reads, no, it's not, it's not variable. There's a reset. Is, is that just a one-time reset, or, or you know, first of all, how it's known it's known to save. I would still argue the known savings are up through ten years, and after that, whether it's variable or reset, how many times it gets reset? After that, there's a lot of unknown. So 
So I'm still yeah. kind of. Kim, correct me if I'm wrong. The first 10 years are fixed at 2.6. Fixed. 2. Okay, there's another term. Six, mm -hmm. Correct. 2.65. Mm -hmm. And at, that is fixed for the first 10 years. What he's referring to, as as we said, is yes, we will. It's it's it was it's unknown what it would be after 10 years. However, we can be evaluating that moving towards that 10 years, and also his. Um, Scenarios were if if the rate doubled, um, you would still save I think it was 150,000. Right. And then if it um, five, uh, went, went all the way up, it would have to go up to 11 percent mm -hmm. for us to not for it not to have been uh, any savings at the end of those at the end of the 10 years. So. There is a it, there is an unknown after the ten years, but with his thirty years experience, his recommendation based on um, council's agreement, right? Are we are we going to have a workshop on this also on not a workshop a session on this? Let's have two more questions. Yeah, but no, we, we went through a lot of this at the thing, and it's it's. Uh, well, but this is the official meeting where most. No, this is about. this is a business meeting where it, it comes out. But to get down to the nitty gritty, back and forth, and having all the figures, I think we've been through it once at the office. We'll go through it again. Correct. Yes. It'll be just on, on Thursday, right? On December third. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, and why the, why just bring it up now? I make a motion that we move I, we move on because it's a to the the business meeting. I got two more questions. I make a motion that we stop discussion of this and go on to uh, and do it on Thursday or uh, Tuesday night. Right, that's my motion. Well, it's not, that's not an agenda item to make the motion at this point. Anyway, the other question I have is people ask me, with the most recent hiring, how, how many employees does, does the county do we now employ? Okay, we have a motion on the table. Well, I have, a question. I have two questions. Our council meeting. Do we have a second? Right. People asking me, I mean, they don't ask you guys, but okay, and with the most recent hiring, how many full time employees does town have? Just a simple question. I'll give you a numeric number, and that should suffice. With well, the recent hired, mean? Did we, we, did we recently hire somebody? At the current budget here? Like this past week, it was in the. No, that was a replacement. Yeah. We okay. lost. We lost. Okay, when we replaced. Okay, but that's is a. We are yeah, we have, we have resignation. So what is so anyway? What is the current number, irregardless of replace or or hire? Off the top of my head, uh, I, I believe it's 27, 28 full time, and 35 total part time. We have uh, two part time in the library, um, and we also have uh, two. One or two part time in the harbor year round, part time year round, and we also have several seasonal in the harbor. Um, and we have a, a assistant town manager two days a week part time. And if, if I, before you continue, um, sure. But the majority of us, all of us, either go to the town hall and ask questions, we email or we call. How often do you do any of the above? Any of them? That doesn't, and we that wouldn't doesn't matter. Yeah, no. I ask a simple question. But she, 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 she didn't seem to have a problem with it. Well, that's she. I'm telling you what I think. Okay. You need to converse more. You need to ask questions ahead of time. Ahead of time, okay. Ahead, ahead of time. Ahead of time. I was asking questions ahead of time today. Did I not, town manager? We talked for about half hour. Good. Five First time this year. Go ahead with your how do you questions. Know, how do you know that? Go ahead. Okay. I'm going ahead, right? This, this one, I, this question is for all the staff and, and the elected official. I, I struck out last month, and I'm sure y'all didn't expect me to go to the whole meeting without asking this one again. But can anybody, will anybody say, does the front of that old school building still face south? Will anybody answer that? A simple question. You finished? Okay. I'm finished. All right, let's move on. Under old business, PSA regional wastewater update. Good evening. There, there are uh, three attachments to your staff report, and uh, those are pertinent to 
the business of the PSA and the Board of Supervisors has conducted uh, relative to the proposed regional wastewater system since the last update. Uh, the first attachment is the presentation that the PSA used for the public information session on uh, September 16th. And uh, the county administrators also used that same presentation for the public hearing the board held on September 23rd. Um, I don't know if you have had an opportunity to take a look at that. Do you have any questions about that, that presentation? The other two attachments, the first one is the results of the public hearing process, and that's a listing of tax parcels that have voiced either verbally or in writing a desire to be excluded from the proposed service district and special tax district. And then the third attachment is a map of the district, the proposed district, uh, color-coded to indicate those parcels. So the parcels that you see in yellow uh, have asked to be excluded from the tax district. And then there are four parcels indicated in green that has to be included. They were not part of the original proposal. Uh, we uh, remind you that at the end of the public hearing, the Board of Supervisors tabled action on creation of the Special Tax District and asked the PSA to go back and look at other alternatives. Uh, we have uh, done that. And at the meeting that we had Monday night, we have uh, firmed up some recommendations to the Board of Supervisors. They have not been conveyed yet to them. Uh, the Executive Director is, uh, is uh, in that process now, of fleshing them out, and uh, we'll include some financial uh, tables with that. But I want to pass this out to you. This is the, these are the draft recommendations that the PSA is uh, adopted at Monday's meeting uh, to provide to the Board of Supervisors. Um, the, uh, we did miss, in your staff report there is a mistake. Uh, we had uh, indicated 10 parcels wish to be excluded, it's actually 11. Uh, a and Electric Cooperative actually owns two of the parcels and we missed one. Um, that is uh, right off of Bayside Road on the map. So the PSA agreed to provide some recommendations to the Board of Supervisors, and that's shown in uh, paragraph two there. Uh, we are going to recommend removal of the A&N parcels, the two parcels on Bayview Circle. And then uh, there is one parcel south of the A&N parcel, uh, 84A100, which would be the only remaining parcel in that area, and we're going to recommend that that be removed also because it would not be cost efficient to extend the line all the way to that individual parcel. The, um, the, the two green parcels to the north, 842B and 842B1, uh, the PSA board is going to recommend that they be added to the special tax district. And those, uh, that actually would be consistent with the proposed zoning map uh, that is being considered by the Board of Supervisors, which would convert the zoning of those parcels to commercial. Uh, the board is also going to recommend adding 
the two green parcels to the south, two large ones, 91A14 and 91A12 to the district, they, uh, they requested to be included. Uh, those two are, are uh, zoned agricultural right now, so they would have to be rezoned, and they are not uh, at this point uh, included in the commercial district in the proposed, uh, proposed zoning map, but they could be. The, uh, and both of those, or all four of those parcels, are pretty much within the footprint of the service district that's being considered, so they would not add significantly to, actually hardly at all to the cost of the, of the project. And then we have, um, in paragraph three, we're not going to make a recommendation on these items, but there are uh, nine remaining parcels of the 11 that have requested exclusion, and we're just going to leave that up to the board supervisors to decide. And uh, we did find that there are two parcels that have fully developed storage businesses. Uh, one has a bathroom, one doesn't. And uh, we're going to bring that uh, to the Board of Supervisors' attention to either remove them or retain them in the service district. I did mention that the Board of Supervisors is considering a new zoning map, which would add additional commercial properties in this area. If you look up between US 13 and Business 13 Bayside Road, uh, those white parcels in there without the numbers on them, uh, under the proposed zoning map, all of those would be rezoned commercial. So we will uh, indicate to the Board of Supervisors that they ought to consider adding those to the service district. Uh, the other we uh, will uh, we're not going to make a recommendation on, but we're going to uh, uh, recommend that the Board of Supervisors consider <coughs> either retaining the existing 75-25 debt service ratio split or changing it to 50-50. 50% in the general tax district, 50%, I'm sorry, the special tax district, 50% out of the general fund. Uh, at least one of the Board of Supervisors uh, indicated uh, at the conclusion of the public hearing, that he was a little uncomfortable with the 75-25 split. And then the fourth paragraph, uh, considerations for the PSA board, uh, this would not be within the Board of Supervisors' purview, is to establish a connection charge with a premium uh, for those parcels that are going to be excluded or wish to be excluded from the service district. And then another connection charge without a premium for those new parcels that after the district was created that would be contiguous to it and would wish to be added so that we could grow the district over time. So that, uh, that outline of input to the Board of Supervisors was approved Monday evening. And uh, we should have the recommendations to the board uh, within the week, next week. Uh, any questions? When will the board hear the recommendations? Will the board hear the recommendations? Well, uh, it'll, it'll just be a, it'll be a letter from the PSA to the Board of Supervisors. The, uh, the board is not going to make a uh, decision on this until a couple of other things occur. Uh, of course, they are waiting for the input uh, from the town of Cape Charles via the PSA on operating costs for the system. And uh, I know that the town council did have a work session on that, and uh, that has not been officially conveyed to the PSA yet. But we, uh, the board, PSA board, is reviewing that data uh, to see if it seems reasonable. So we are waiting for that. And then the other thing that we're doing is that the, uh, we did approve an amendment to the engineering contract uh, that was assigned by the, uh, the county to the PSA. And that is for uh, topographic survey work and preliminary engineering up to the 30% design phase, a uh, total of $70,000. $40,000 for the survey phase and $30,000 for the initial design phase. 
And we are almost complete with the survey work, about 80% complete. And at that point, we'll have a pretty good idea, a pretty good baseline for them to review the cost estimate for the system. So that's where we are. That's what's happened since the last report. I have a question. Frank, on 91.8.3.13, it's got Wendell. Is that Margaret's? Uh... Yes. Okay. Who owns that? Margaret. Is it there a conflict of interest when we have discussions on this? What would be the conflict? Well, you're, like, you're on council and you vote on it and it's your property. Well, there is no, no vote been taken, but no, but I can have an opinion as a taxpayer of whether this is wise. I'm a fan. I'm, I would I'd ask legal get legal counsel on that. Well, he's already taken it out, so he's taken it out of the picture. And I sit here without any anything to do. That you'd be saying that everybody that's not in is uh, wouldn't have an ability to have an opinion. Excuse me. I need to correct that. Uh, the PSA board is not taking it out. Uh, the PSA is going to recommend to the board of supervisors that they consider either leaving it in or taking it out. That's what I understand. No one's taking it out. No. Um, I'm going to recommend they take it out. Irregardless, it's not, a, I still can have opinion. I don't but think so. Maybe, no, maybe no. Yeah. Anytime we have discussions on, you stepped out when we were talking about your, 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 the door, the, uh, your garage, mm -hmm. you, you sat in the front row when the, when the, with Diane Davis contesting you. So you trying to say I don't can ask questions about the PSA? They could probably ask it privately. I don't think it's a table. Because you're, you're, it's, it's your well, property. Maybe, I don't. maybe we should get a legal opinion. I think we will. We'll do that tomorrow. All right. So however, this is not. However, I, I do have some questions that don't pertain to that particular. Is why I, I like to know why that. How can it be that this project is still going forward with both the county and town comprehensive plans? And having language in again, a warning and specifically stating they, they want they want commercial activities in the towns and not on the hot. Well, we've discussed that before, and that's not within the purview of the PSA. No, that's right, and that's not a question for Bob. And then the other question is, you, you don't have an agreement with the town yet. We're spending seventy thousand dollars engineering work. Why wouldn't you get your agreement first? Then, then spend the money to engineer we're not what's been agreed to. We're not agreed required to. to by the county. Not required to. Any and, other questions? and the PSA board felt that to provide the board of supervisors an appropriate update on the cost estimate, the engineering was required. Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I need to back up a little bit and apologize uh, to other department reports. I just wanted to take a second and thank everybody. Um, yesterday we went to Heritage Acres, which we've done, I believe this is the third or fourth year now. Um, the town staff council, um, we joined with the Northampton County Sheriff's Office this year to add some more resources. We go to Heritage Acres every year and feed them for Thanksgiving. And I just, it, this was the first year, I mean, it's a good problem to have. We actually ran out of all the food um, because we had so many people. I guess we fed 75 to 100 people. Um, uh, Jimmy's not here, but Jimmy Pruitt helped to deliver to the shut-ins who weren't able to come out and eat. Um, Sheriff David Downey helped him, which hopefully will again open up more doors that we'll be able to do more next year. But um, all this is done by the kindness of the staff and the council, and um, it's, it's just a really great thing. And I, I just want to thank everybody because it was it was a fun day. It gave us a chance as staff. You know, we work together, but we don't always see each other because everybody's so busy doing their own thing, working. And it gave us a chance to work together. Um, as a group, and that was really great. So again, thank you. And Everybody thank you. It was great. Thank yeah. you. Any other departments I missed? No, but I would like to say that uh, Chief Brown and um, Sergeant Pruitt are at um, Chelsea's graduation. So they have an officer graduate. Tomorrow we'll have a new police officer. Okay. Um, next item: former library building update. This, this is for information. Who's got it? We did hand out a new uh, revised layout. Um, yeah, we
Yeah, we've been uh, talking to him on the farm. He's got the design. Y'all have copies of it? Yes, and I apologize. I was in a meeting with the tourism director. I had one to show. Uh, put up for everyone. So it's got the uh, uh, handicapped bathroom up towards the front of the building. Uh, I thought right now is to leave the second bathroom, um, the, the small bathroom that's existing, leave that there. Um, so it'll give us two bathrooms in the building. The uh, handicap ramp will come up on the east side of the building um, to a, a doorway that enters into a hallway that's up near the bathroom. So um, the entrance to the bathroom will be private in that hallway um, where the uh, side entrance comes in off of the handicap ramp. We've had the, uh, the side yard staked out by a surveyor, so we know that there's ample room to get the, get the ramp in there as drawn. And um, so um, we're waiting right now for a structural engineer's report. That was recommended by Leon that you know, if we're going to change you know, the way this building is going to get used, that uh, we might want to check into it, make sure that it's uh, everything's there to support the use. So, um, and I guess uh, once we get that report, we'll be uh, uh, putting it out for bid. And I would say that probably be using this building, um, maybe council meeting in February. Well, maybe you know, yeah, maybe June, maybe February. Then. Well, she's in February. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, Libby's most excited. All right, great. Thank so. you. <laughs> uh, the next item, which is an action item, Cape Charles Multi-Use Trail Grant Award Acceptance. We uh, previously reported to you that uh, the Commonwealth Transportation Board approved our request for an additional $312,000 for the multi-use trail project. And uh, VDOT has sent us the revised, uh, it's called Appendix A, uh, to the grant agreement, which formally uh, modifies the grant amount uh, to add that money. So uh, this action item is to authorize the town manager to uh, execute uh, that amendment to the grant agreement. So we need this in the form of a motion. So moved. Second. Any questions? So moved by unanimous consent. Next item, new business, action item, zoning ordinance 4.1, sign ordinance, scheduled public hearing. Right. Um, for some time now, the Planning Commission has been working on a uh, revision and update of the sign regulations and the zoning ordinance. Um, we've gotten into a, a place that we feel pretty happy with. It's been sent off to legal review. Uh, they had two minor comments, and we uh, incorporated that at the last Planning Commission meeting. Um, so they they made a motion to uh, schedule a joint public hearing if uh, town council agrees, and they're looking for December 10th. Um, so if, if Town Council is willing um, or recommending scheduling joint public hearing for December 10th. So, so moved. Second. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Hearing no objections, we'll schedule that public hearing, joint public hearing. Uh, next item under new business action item waterworks backwash vault. Since the uh, the demolition of the uh, the old wastewater plant, we've been uh, backwashing the uh, the water filters into the directly into what was the old UV vault. They used to backwash and uh, discharge into the polishing pond, but when that was uh, decommissioned, um, the backwash water was directed direct was was routed directly to the um, to the old UV vaults. They hold about 7,500 gallons, um, which is about one filter's worth of backwash, and it comes right up to the top with that. 
So what we're looking to do is expand this to hold both back washes and closer to uh, 18,000 gallons uh, capacity, giving it some free board for one thing and uh, some space in the bottom so that when the pump pumps all the way down it's not into the sludge at the bottom because right now everything is so tight that when it pumps all the way down we're actually hitting the sludge at the bottom and we're getting some some of that discharged over the side, which we don't want to do. So we're looking to um, expand the vault to accept uh, both backwashes and have ample room you know, to uh, eliminate any of the uh, iron laden water to go over the, go over the side. We, um, this is, we're under the gun from DEQ to do this. I think during the budget uh, sessions we had, you know, we discussed this issue, and since nobody had really had anything to say about it so far, um, compliance-wise, uh, we went ahead and decided not to budget money for it. Now they have DEQ it has raised the issue and they want us to eliminate any of this uh, iron laden water from going over the side so this is what we've come up with this is the solution we've come up with um, DEQ is reviewing it right now and we feel like they're going to say you know move forward with it we do have money budgeted for engineering of the um, of the uh, pump stations um, what we would like to do is redirect that money um, to use for this project. Right now the figures are looking like it's going to cost about $28,000. There's $30,000 budgeted um, for the engineering, so it would, uh, it would cover the cost of doing the expansion. And if we were to move forward with the new money and um, have the projects, uh, we could certainly the engineering into that project uh, that we already budgeted for um, and or as Dave said this is a, a more immediate need because pop stations engineering needs to be done too but this is a priority and uh, that's a recommendation. Also as Dave mentioned um, when we talked about this during the budget session uh, this, this summer was the first summer of uh, evaluating the, the impact and uh, the uh, consumption of water uh, during the summer season um, in, in this new route. And we didn't have any expectation of what that impact was going to be, um, having uh, just gone through one summer of being rerouted into this vault, into this new um, operation. So having gone through that, uh, we definitely need to expand it earlier than so move. Um, so move. Second. Second. Any questions? So move by unanimous consent. Next action Thank item. Thank you. Thank you. Virginia's Waterman's Memorial Easement.
put it out for bids and uh, second uh, public hearing. And uh, a follow-up to that, uh, the Virginia Women's Memorial um, correct, um, has uh, raised over 100000 out of the 200 some thousand that they have um, for the um, design. <coughs> and uh, what we're asking is to uh, advertise for bids for the proposed location um, for the memorial. And uh, would, by scheduling, we also schedule a public hearing um, as part of that process. We are working on a draft easement uh, as well that would come back to the council um, for the work to do tomorrow. Any motion? So moved. Second. Any questions? <laughs> are we going to maintain it after it's built? Uh, no. So we have a motion, we have a second, if there are no further questions, all in favor, go right ahead. I just wondered whether or not there are any utilities on that area, free and clear? Uh, it's free and clear, but there, uh, there will be uh, the possibility of an electric utility going to the board of uh, As of right now, it's free and clear. Okay, thank you. If there are no further questions, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? So moved. Um, next item, Northampton County funding request. This is an action item. Um, Madam Mayor and Council, um, every year uh, we we submit a letter uh, to Northampton County for a contribution request uh, for the upcoming physical budget. And this year, um, we have put together um, uh, a few uh, priorities uh, that the town would be requesting funding assistance um, uh, from the county. Uh, last year, we did receive a $5,000 increase um, towards the library. Um, operations. Uh, we've uh, in the past been the county has contributed fifteen thousand, and this past year they contributed twenty thousand. And we were close to receiving funding on the towards the fireworks last year. It, it made it to the almost to the end of their budget process, and then it was cut. Um, we are requesting for uh, twenty thousand dollars for operation of the Cape Charles Memorial Library. And we also have 40000 towards the library expansion, um, $7,000 uh, for the July 4th uh, fireworks display. And we also did um, include uh, uh, public beach operations and, and uh, offshore breakwater. And this is for discussion purposes. We also uh, continued uh, to um, ask Northampton County to support for to provide emergency services to the residents of the county after the relocation of Riverside uh, Shore Memorial Hospital and also to continue support for the Cape Charles Harbor Access Road, the Cape Charles Volunteer Fire Company, and the Eastern Shore Virginia Festival's organizations uh, for tall ships initiative um, that they have helped fund in the past. So any recommendation um, of the items that we have um, Outlaid. Can you add to the list, Sure. So, yeah, so a discussion. I was just wondering, um, Cape Charles Rescue Squad has our name but doesn't live in our town, but why aren't we asking to support them too since they support us? They support the town. The county can play to pay for them completely. Uh, we get letters, well, I mean, household yeah. letters. We can, we can change that to be fire and emergency. I just, I don't know what I know. I think I would check on that first to make sure. If they pay for it immediately, then I think they pay for it immediately, I believe. But if well, they're okay. struggling, volunteer. They're not struggling, not like the fire, because they get back from the they insurance. Do, they do building. Yes, do they? yes. Okay. Okay, thank you for answering the question. They can always use money. I'm sure they can. Well, that's why they do that fundraiser where they send you a, a letter to your home. Okay. 
Any other additions to the wish list? Anyone? I have a question. We, have we ever received any money from the Port of Fireworks in the beach? Says you just said we, it was yeah. cut. It was Every cut. year is cut. Yeah, we, we have been we passed. Have. We have uh, requested yeah, for um, services yeah. for a public beach, also for break you know, support. But no, um, today we've only received um, funding for the library operations. A portion. Of a portion. Was. Um, I, I, I hope that we will they will consider the fireworks um, as a part of their tourism initiative. Seven thousand. Seven. asking for seven. It costs uh, 40, 50, 15. 15. 15. That's why I said 15. All right. Um, so if there are no other additions to this list, the request list from the county, then I'd like to ask for a motion. Second. Hearing no objections, so move. Uh, water reuse item E. Last action item for the evening, Mr. Bannon. There are a lot of words and numbers in this staff report. Uh, bottom line is that we are limited uh, by our discharge permit to 250,000 gallons per day. Uh, highly unlikely, I would say virtually impossible, uh, to get that increase when we need it uh, because of the TMDL uh, for the cleanup of the bay. Uh, we, uh, we are at about 150,000 gallons per day now. That allows us about 800 additional connections, equivalent residential connections. So this is not an immediate issue, but we know that water reuse is in our future uh, should we grow beyond 250,000 gallons of discharge. Uh, in the wastewater treatment plant budget, uh, we planned for that, and uh, we budgeted $85,000 for design work and $185,000 for construction to include water reuse features at the plant. Uh, that included a pipeline uh, to uh, Old Cape Charles Road. It's ready to go uh, to implement water reuse when we need it. Uh, we have, it's a complicated process to get the EQ permit for water reuse. Uh, we have to do a stormwater analysis of the Bay Creek Lake System, that is our uh, most convenient and least cost reuse site uh, and that stormwater analysis needs to prove to them that the lake system can uh, handle the effluent and not discharge to the bay except in the case of a 10-year storm. Uh, we've completed the survey work for the lake system and uh, the next step is to do that stormwater analysis. That's the last uh, major step uh, to be prepared to actually request a permit uh, from DEQ. Uh, we, uh, our engineers estimate that that analysis will cost ten to $15,000. And uh, we have money available within the wastewater treatment plant budget. Um, the, uh, uh, earlier this evening, a uh, reference was made to the $5 million zero interest loan uh, that we got for the wastewater plant. Uh, we still have a little over $300,000 of headroom under that authorized amount that we have not utilized. So we do have a funding source for this effort. Uh, but again, since uh, we are so, so far under at this point, uh, our uh, capacity, we did not want to take this additional step uh, without the council's uh, concurrence. Uh, I personally believe that it's a, a wise thing to do since the GHD engineering team is on board. Uh, they're very familiar with, uh, uh, with the, the analysis work that they've done so far, and they have worked cooperatively with the EQ uh, to get us to this point. So uh, it would be up to 15000 and uh, we'd like to do it. This is an action item. Need a motion, please. So moved. We have a motion, we have a second. Do we have any questions? 
All in favor? Yeah, yes. Oh. Over here. I have a question of the current average daily flow is about 150 thousand gallons. How, mu how much of that is coming from the Old Town Cape Charles versus the annexed uh, Bay Creek, the Bay Creek developments? Well, I'd have to do a calculation, but there are about uh, there are about 300, about 300 homes occupied. Yeah, I think that's about it, right. Yeah. So, let me turn on my trusted calculator. Twenty-five thousand gallons per day average, thirty-seven five, uh, and then of course you've got amenities, uh, golf club, that type of thing. Uh, my guess would be somewhere around fifty thousand uh, from uh, from that uh, that side, and then uh, from the annex property, and then from the, the north side, we've got the Aqua Restaurant, uh, a few things in there. I couldn't even hazard a guess on the other side. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, but my guess is that, that, that a third of it is coming from the new parts of town and uh, two thirds of it from old part of town. So oh, that that makes sense. And the reason why I ask that is um, I'm looking, I'm looking at this and hearing that 250,000 gallon number uh, bantered around it for reuse. How does that how does that uh, figure in with the annexation agreement? Um, you know, we, I guess a lot of people are very anxious about, and I never thought we would be 23 or more years into the agreement and have received uh, no, no uh, funding from the developer. However, if we're already spending money to plan to exceed that limit. Why does that or does that not trigger some funding from the developer per the annexation agreement? The annexation agreement only requires the developer's contribution when the, annex, the demand from the annexed property causes us to go over our currently permitted capacity. Well, if we go over the 250 discharge in that wouldn't that be going over your capacity? No, but we're spending money to make arrangements to handle it. You're making the same argument that we made years ago to the developer, and they disagree. So, uh, and and they, that's all they have to do is disagree? You no, know, it's right in the annexation agreement. I believe you're on a council and the annexation agreement was, uh, was approved. And, uh, it's not that cut and dry. It's pretty cut and dry. I mean, it's pretty cut and dry or not that cut and dry? Well, I mean, it is cut and dry. It's not as... It, it's, as far as the trigger, it's cut right. and dry. So, and the other thing is that certainly we could hit 250,000 gallons uh, with development outside of the annex property. Uh, the north side of town by the marina. Uh, the Southport properties, <coughs> uh, potentially development of the Tappan properties. That was approved for mm -hmm. uh, over 400 mm -hmm. residential units and a hotel. So you, you can't necessarily say that all of the growth, or any of the growth, up to 250,000 gallons, will come from the annex property. That's true. Well, isn't that one of the uh, points the town is researching about how the, how if you if, if you insist on going out PSA has what has their way and goes out to the highway in violation of the two current comp plans I like to throw in there as they stand now I know you're reworking I mean I suspect maybe some of that language will be diluted I should hope not but um, then how how is that you know how does that figure into how you calculate this if, it makes no difference where the demand comes from. It's whoever, it, it's basically. The town manager is getting ready to send the council. Well, have you sent council? Waiting for that. 
That, that's my concern. If we're if we're having to spend, if the citizens of town are having to spend money to accommodate the excess of 250,000 gallons discharge, um, why why doesn't that you know trigger why doesn't that trigger that issue? You said you made that argument earlier, and the developer disagreed, and then we said what okay. Our attorney says we, with the, on that particular point, it's clear. Okay, now our, our attorney said that. Now, did he, did he write that down on paper, or is that just a verbal opinion? Uh, it actually is a presentation. Yeah, we, we, can, we can certainly. Okay, but that doesn't tell me whether. So he made a presentation and he had printed, prepared, and committed it to paper? I think so. But that has, you know, that has very little to do with, with what we're, with, we're, with we're discussing. Yeah, that's just for. Well, to me, we're talking. We keep spending and spending, and you know, and some of this. And when you go over, clearly, it seems to trigger. It ought to trigger Absolutely. something. And I'd like to. Hear, and if it doesn't, I would. I would like to read the opinion of the law of our lawyer that you, we you don't know how much we pay for it. We, we, we discussed that today. We can sit down and review the annexation and provide you any, you know, anything you want. It, it is outlined, and it's a very, as you know, it, how, whoever was in charge of, of that agreement back in the day did not uh, have a... Uh, we, we were all on council in that agreement. <laughs> we were. Yes. So, I, uh, all right, so... <coughs> You're going to make an appointment and, and go over well, the here's, here's what I'd like to suggest, the Chief Attorney. I would like to suggest the town council have an annexation agreement workshop. So that we bring our questions in this and review the analysis that our lawyers give us, review the annexation agreement so that we, uh, to what point, right? To what point, to, to the point that we are uh, knowledgeable and, and more cognizant of that agreement so that we so we protect the interests of our current taxpayers and finally get the developer to help pay well, for some of, some of this uh, sewage treatment plan. Well, I, I would like to think, Frank, that since you were present at the time the anti-segregation was created, that you would be cognizant of all the points that are already there because you voted on it at the time. I voted on it. And, and I'll tell and you something I, else that I, happened at that meeting. is very similar to this board I'm serving on now. And you correct me if I'm wrong over there. I was at that meeting and I looked around the table and I said, "Good gracious, we need our own lawyer. We don't. We, what are we doing with that? Brown and Roots lawyer in here?" And I made a motion to get our own lawyer, and it died for lack of second. Okay, so I'm, yeah, and I, there I, was I, no, and there was no money. Well, well that's your okay. the the point I was trying to make is feel free to go sit down with the town <coughs> manager and go over and ask all the questions you want. I, I don't feel like I need to. You do by all means. Do it. Councilman Wendell, to, to your we, we have workshops on where to park your boats on your trailers. Then make a motion we, we make, for a we, workshop. We make, we make, make a big deal out of make that. A make a yes, motion. Yes, it comes to something five to twenty make million make dollars and means something to the town. The developer says, I disagree with you, and we do nothing. We, okay, well, we, and we can't make a motion. I was just corrected oh. until we resolve this question this action item and then feel free by all means to make a motion for a work session. Well, do I need to well, who, yes. who makes a motion for all the other agenda items that end up on the agenda? I don't think there's motions made for everyone. This you and the, uh, you and the town manager. You come you come to me, it's my agenda. You come to me and you say, I want a work session. We don't have to debate this during the meeting. You say, I want to discuss, I want to discuss and if I don't like what you want to discuss, you come right back at me with two other council members and you overrule. And it's on the agenda. Anytime you want. Fire for effect. Well, we'll consider it uh, one there. council meeting number one to have a work. Fine, on. thank you. Okay, but we have a, a motion. We have... Hey, it's not even we have a motion, we have a second. If we have no further questions, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Godwin? 
All those in favor? Aye. Any, uh, Mr. Wendell? Uh, I'll vote no on it. Okay. That's one no. Thank you. Um, the next section is the Mayor and Council comments. Five minutes. Joan, timer please. I know you've been on the Queen Elizabeth, Queen Mary. Look at that. All rested. All right. Uh, Council, you're going first. Mr. Wendell? I'll check right now and see what... Let it go around the table. Mr. Godwin, do you have any questions? I don't have a question. I have a comment. Oh, go right ahead. I was very impressed with the, uh, the write up that I saw regarding the wastewater treatment and his, his historical value and when it started and when it ended. And I thought it was very informative and I'm glad that the town took time to do that. What's the question? And, uh, so, uh, and I also like to have the promise uh, a copy of it. Yes, you can get it. Wait for time. All right. Time's up. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, nothing? Nothing. I wanted to pass on to the Council, the Mayor, the Town, staff, that I was um, pulled aside two days ago when I was going to the post office to pick up my mail. And I was told that the town should be complimented for the way that they have been keeping the town, the park, and particularly the streets. They said that they have lived here almost their whole lifetime, and they have never seen the streets as well taken care of as they have now. And I think our, our staff needs to hear that, because they hear a lot of the complaints. We don't often hear a lot of the compliments. So my compliments to you on behalf of one of our citizens. Thank you. Thank you. And if you get a, a complaint about leaves in the trash can in front of 109 Mason, we did it. We sweep our own leaves. So, um, I've Council... I've numerous complaints. You have? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Councilman Wendell? Okay, on, on the compliment side of things, I guess it was a memo. I don't, I don't see it in the packet. I may have overlooked it, but there was a, uh, I believe there was a plan commission report. And or, oh, oh, boy. It was the, thank you. Let's see, the Akamakalahan Planning District Commission, uh, a letter from town manager, Arthur's King Charles applauds and fully supports the Akamakalahan Planning District Commission effort to extend the Southern Tip Bike and Hike Trail from Cadeville Road uh, to <coughs> Cape Charles. And I think that would be a wonderful thing to pursue. Uh, I've been out to uh, Damascus and uh, on Virginia Creeper Trail a couple times now, and uh, it has uh, that activity has spawned a lot of little cottage industries, other uh, restaurants and bicycle repair shops and vans that transport you to one end of the trail and pick you up. And I know this would be a much shorter version, but I think it would uh, it would definitely be a tourist attraction, something that would help Cape Charles a lot. So I, um, that, that trail had been put into work. I remember Tim Hayes from way back in the 90s. Tim had that plan with the uh, with the old railroad line, and uh, and. Uh, Tell them how, 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 how successful the, the citizenry jumped on that bandwagon. Well, that you know, that that was there's a lot of disinformation out there. They were scared of bikers, the bikers riding by the, uh, the elementary school. I said these bikers are going to be driving Volvo's and carrying American Express cards in their wallets. But they had a lot to do with uh, old farmland that they were scared of chemicals or uh, irrigation ponds. And and at that time, actually, that bike trail would. Uh, the old railroad trail run through the property of my family out at the time, and uh, we were the only, people, only landowner in the county supporting it. But hopefully, 25 years later, uh, we can revisit that and uh, bring that bicycle trail to downtown to Cape Charles. Um, and they're doing a feasibility study. Who owns the rail? The railway, you know? Oh, this just been claimed by each one. Oh, well, at that time, at that time, they said the Nature Conservancy, the Nature Conservancy, 
owned it, but there was a lot of debate about that. And uh, I guess the other comment, we'll give, give out a few details here, is uh, I wonder what kind of conflict the rest of you all perhaps had when you can't answer the simple, for two months in a row, refuse to answer a question about which way a building faces. How, how, tricky, is, how tricky a question is that really? Silence is tacit. It is what? Tacit. So I, I don't know what kind of conflict you got, but I think you all are researching because that, that one seems to be, uh, that's kind of, kind of very awkward. But if, as a hint, if we, could, uh, if we maybe we, if we knew which, which way the front door of the old library faced, that would help you figure out, conversely, which way the school faces. Finish? Uh, I had, I'll, I'll hold back for a minute, and then we'll hear what's over. Can I go? All right, I'm going to go last, and then I'll do the, um, the public announcements for the dates. I would like to send a message to Old School K. Charles, and I would uh, very respectfully ask them to publish the offer that they made to the town for the building, and once they do, that might calm things down in the town if the citizens can see what the offer was, and it wouldn't be he said, she said, then, then publish all three. Publish all three, or allow me to, and then we can move on. Thank you, that's all I have to say. And it, you're finished with your? Sure. Yeah, Mayor, you have last word. I did. Um, the announcement's November the 27th. The town offices will be closing at noon for the Thanksgiving holiday, the 28th and 29th. They'll still remain closed. The next work session is December 5th. Seven. Followed. Seven. Second. Third. 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 That was done after December. Yeah, okay. Third. And fifth. And fifth. And fifth. December 6th is the holiday progress pro progressive dinner tour. The seventh is the Central Park Grand Illumination, followed lines, lighted boat show. It's and lighted, all part uh, of the and the, the golf seven. park parade. And the golf park, thank you. Christian school is having and the cookie a, trip. Christian, no, mm -hmm. Christian school is having Sanders workshop, I believe, that mm -hmm. weekend. No, it's not on there. Uh, December December fifteenth, there'll be the cookie trail at the uh, uh, bed and breakfast. It starts at the library. They're asking for to bring DVDs. Money, checks, or Legos. Legos. And then the, all the churches in town will be open for people to go in and look out and have a docents there in the churches. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I also mentioned, since you didn't, that um, the Saturday after Thanksgiving is the oyster roast mm -hmm. oh, yeah. at the museum. At the museum, which is a great fundraiser. So if you can and also uh, this weekend is the annual Tool Mania um, right. mm -hmm. uh, fundraiser for the Cape Charles Volunteer Fire <clears throat> Company. And Paul Skolnick is here and has tickets there. Jeff sold out. Yeah. Go ahead. And, um, also at 5 o'clock on Saturday, December 7th. Uh, December 7th is Pearl Harbor Day. Uh, the American Legion Post 56 will be having a little service in the harbor before the light is built today and we'll be dropping a reef in the water and whatever. So, we're all right. So, address warmly, there's lots to do. The 19th is the town council regular meeting and the 20th is the uh, employee luncheon. Can I make a motion that we adjourn? Second. Hearing no objections, we're adjourned. Thank you for coming.